Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick video tutorial on uh, how I was able to upgrade a Nazgul XL5 frame from a CADX Vista to a O3 Air unit. So catastrophic crash last week, left my frame in two pieces, so figured since I was rebuilding it, let's see how it goes. All right, so the most challenging part was actually getting this into the XL5 frame. So this is an iFlight XL5 V5. So the original CADX is 20 by 20 millimeters, the interior mounting holes. This frame also fits 30.5 by 30.5. Uh, however, the O3 is 25.5 by 25.5. So to do that, I had to 3D print an adapter plate. Uh, as far as printers go, Ender V3, $99 Micro Center Special. Uh, it's probably going to be best bang for your buck on that. So uh, this file, I'll put a link down below, Colts 3D. Uh, it was like two dollars and 13 cents if i recall so you have to actually make some modifications you're going to need some m2 nuts so what i did to make this easier on me is i used b7000 adhesive it's like a little needle tip applicator same thing i use for cell phone repair you can put a little bit of that adhesive in all these slots where your nuts are going to go and then you're going to get your m2 nuts going to push them into there just like that just like that and that makes it a lot easier when you're actually putting it into the frame and mounting it so they don't get pushed through so then essentially what's going to happen is this is going to this is the same plate that's down here in the bottom of this XL5 uh, you're going to actually attach your O3 from the bottom up and the exterior screw holes right there. It's going to be your 25.5 by 25.5 dimensions. And then you're going to run, you're going to run your uh, M2 thread up from the bottom of the frame right here, those four. So uh, after, after getting that figured out, that was probably one of the more challenging parts of the build. Uh, after that, I had to split the ribbon cable for the O3 air unit. So uh, I pulled it apart, uh, repinned it uh, here and here. I'm actually going to experiment using the FPVRC2 because I'm tired of carrying three remotes. So, report back later on how that goes. As far as the front goes, um, mounting the camera in there was very straightforward. Yes, you will have standoffs in view. They make TPU print adapters that pushes it forward to get the frame, get the standoffs out of you. But the way that I fly, I know I'll tear up the camera. So, I'm going to leave it mounted interior just like that. There's two screws on the outside of the air unit, um, the air unit camera. I used the lower, the lower mount. That way I still had some, some room to move it around inside of there. Uh, the neat thing about this 3D mount is there's a channel that, that's right there underneath it. So you can actually, you can actually run your, uh, your harness up underneath there. So uh, you're gonna need the DJI Assistant to update the O3 air unit. Uh, contrary to how it would seem, you're actually going to use the Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series. You're going to have to hook up your O3 to the USB-C port that's on the side of it. The nice thing, DJI fixed it to where it's actually powered off of the USB. So now that it's pulled it up, you click on that, you're going to update it right here. So mine's already current because I've already done it. Alright, a couple things you're going to need to do in beta flight. Here. I'm going to go to the ports tab. If you notice I have my UART 1 enabled, I also have my UART 2 set to serial RX. I have the, the RC signal running through the O3 air unit. Uh, typically I run a Tango Crossfire setup, but I want to try this because again I'm trying to not carry three controllers everywhere I go, so I'll have to see how that works out. Uh, you're going to go down here to the receiver tab, and I use my yellow wire for the S-Bus uh, from the air unit. Here you're going to have your serial set via UART. It's going to be back to the back to the Serial RX UR2. And down here you're actually going to have to change this. Mine was Crossfire to change it to SBUS. Your channel map, you're going to have to reroute AETR1234. That'll get you going. Look through here, find out which switches are assigned to what on the DJI controller, and then you can go through and you can set everything as far as your modes, your arming, everything like that. Beeper, and of course, flip over after crash. As far as the adjustments here, I also have uh, my AUX2 switch uh, routed to a rate profile selection. That way I can run three different rate profiles back over here on the PID tab. So it's kind of nice that I can run different 
going to be on the settings here. It's kind of nice that I can have all of them on a switch. 600, 600, 500, 900, 900, 700, and then if I want to do like combos or something, 1,000, 1,800 right there. A few other things you're going to have to do to get the OSD to work. Um, of course, you have to have OSD enabled. Uh, reconnect. Um, you're going to have to have your OSD enabled, of course. Uh, you can set that up how you want it. I prefer to run that uh, in addition to the DJI given display. To do that though, you're going to have to go into your CLI. Now, this is intimidating to some people, but any command, if you want to see what the current setting is, for instance, the OSD display port. So set OSD underscore display port underscore device, hit enter. And it's going to show me what it's set to. So for this, um, since I want to use the Betaflight display pass-through, I'm going to have to set OSD display port underscore device equals MSP. All right, so now I know that that's set to MSP. There's one other thing you're going to have to do as well. You're going to have to set the display port MSP serial. And I'm going to set that to zero. And that's going to be one less than your and that's going to be one less than your port over here than your UR1 since I have my UR1 minus one is zero so if you had it set to UR2 you'd make it one if you made it three so on so you can figure that out so uh, that's about all that you're going to have to do over here in the interface I would also recommend you go and set up your fail safe all those sorts of things that uh, would be expected all right, well, hopefully that was helpful for some of you that were trying to upgrade from the CADEX to the O3R unit, specifically in a nozzle. Like, subscribe. Now's the fun part. Let's go fly.